Greetings, friends. It's so good to see you after our time away from Let's Talk Travel. Uh, I hope you missed us. Uh, we were very busy enjoying our trip to Croatia, and that's what this evening's interview is all about. I know if you have Croatia anywhere on your bucket list, you will want to stay tuned. And if you don't have it on your uh, bucket list, you ought to stay tuned to find out why it belongs there anyway. Uh, I am so glad this evening to welcome our, our guests. Uh, I cannot tell you how delighted I am to have them on board. Did not know them prior to this trip, and it was such a pleasure. The, our, our group would definitely not have been the same without them. Welcome to our guests, Mary and Tamara. The, or Tamara, I'm just, I, yeah, yeah. I say it fine unless I see it, and then my, my tongue gets tied up. So, so Tam and Mary, we're so glad you're here this evening, and, and uh, we're glad to welcome you to this episode of Let's Talk Travel. And, and we always like to just start out helping our viewers to just get a little bit of a, a glimpse into you guys, and, and you want to just introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about you, and, and that'll get us started. Okay, um, I'm Mary, and uh, I have a cold, so this isn't my regular voice. <laughs> um, but uh, we, Tam and I live in Colorado. I've lived here for just over 30 years. Um, we're not retired. We are in, I'm in residential real estate. I work for a Cal Caldwell Banker franchise. And um, yeah, I grew up in Houston, um, but have been here more than half my life. So I'm a Coloradan. Hi. And I'm sorry. Go ahead, Pat. I was just going to say, and, and Tamara, what about you? Well, hi, I'm Tamara. I, uh, I um, work in IT. And yeah, I'm still working. I had to get up and uh, go to work Tuesday morning. That was kind of painful after our trip, <laughs> getting back Monday night. Um, I am a native Coloradan. I have lived elsewhere a little bit, but uh, this is home. And uh, what a great trip that was. Oh, well, good. And, and I love Colorado. You guys live in one of the prettiest places on the planet also. So uh, I love, I have a cousin who lives in Estes Park and oh. love when I get an opportunity to go out. It's been a while, but what a beautiful place to live and so many uh, just great sights to see out there. Um, I, I'm wondering, in, in your previous travel experience, have you gals cruised at all or, or you're familiar with regular old yes. ship cruises? Yes. The first cruise we took was actually, um, I think it was about 10 or 11 years ago, and it was a giant uh, Royal Caribbean. We took our daughters and um, and then... Yeah. And then we've taken a, um, a few smaller... So the first one was like 10,000 people. The next, the next three were more like, yeah, that's kind of how I yeah, felt. Yeah, we're done with that. <laughs> <laughs> it was over with. The, the last year had been more like, I don't know, 1,500 to 2,000. But this this last cruise was, you know, no comparison. Just no comparison. Uh, and what, how would you say that that the experience uh, uh, on our, our yacht charter, how, how did that compare? <laughs> There's no comparison. I mean, um, being on a boat that is got enough people on it to populate a small town is um, it's just kind of more like being in a giant building. Um, and and we've really enjoyed the smaller cruises that we've taken. But this one, you are much more connected with the scenery and the water and and the people around you. Yeah, including and, the staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. By the time you get off, you have actually, you, you've connected with somebody. And I just want to say, I really, other than the dancing moon personnel, and I think one other couple, I didn't know anybody uh, who, who joined us prior, prior to this group and just left with a whole new set of friends that you just right. know you're going to, to, to enjoy interacting with going forward. You, you just, uh, it, it's such a, just, such an intimate and, and uh, I mean, just just really connected. You just connect with people so much easier. Yeah, um, it really ahead. gave you the opportunity to to get to know each and every one, and I I loved that. You know, I mm -hmm. felt I felt like I got to know everybody on that cruise, and I I really enjoyed that. 
And we, I mean, we had a really diverse group of people. We had different ages, different stages, uh, mm -hmm. all parts. I mean, we had everybody from California to East Coast Florida people. Uh, and, and, you know, it's just like everybody just got connected and and uh, enjoyed each other. It, w it was just fun to watch. And the there staff felt. Oh, the staff were great, but there was not a single person in our, our group of 20 or whatever it was that I got the sense of, oh, I got to avoid them. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think when you have a group of people, often that's, you know, that just happens because of different personalities. But it was a great group. Yeah. I found that, you know, one night we'd be going out to dinner with, with you know, with, with a, you know, two other state rooms and the next night uh, there'd be a whole different group that you'd end up kind of, right. kind of hanging out with. So it was, it was just really cool that way, how you just formed those. And uh, th this trip is so, this, it, it's just so much about the destination. And of course I have no idea what expectations you might've brought with you when this journey began, but wondering, uh, what did you think of Croatia as a destination? And, and hopefully it didn't disappoint. Well, I, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect for, yeah, for this here. particular trip, but um, I had been to what was then Yugoslavia uh, 42 years ago. Um, when and you were just a small child. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I've wanted to go back ever since. And so uh, experiencing it this way was spectacular. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, I just love that place. And, um, and I've told numerous people over yeah. the years, it's, it's my, it's my favorite destination. I, I encourage everybody to go explore it. And I think we've told about everybody that we know that they need to go to Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> and we've um, also told them to to use Dancing Moon Travel. <laughs> we'll go with that any time, of course. Uh, that, that would be okay with us. So for those of you who don't know about this trip, and I've talked about it incessantly for the past several months, but our itinerary included, it was a seven-night cruise that uh, basically called on a different destination every day. Plus, we had an optional three night pre-cruise that, that explored more of the inland. We started off in Zagreb, which is the capital and, and explored the inland destinations. And then we added a, an other option with the post cruise two nights where we went into uh, Mostar over in Bosnia and the medieval city of Kotar, which uh, just, just, I mean, fascinating destinations. Was there anything, gals, that, that stood out to you in the way of the, the destinations of Ports of Call? Anything, any particular favorites in the mix? Um, well, Blue Cave was stunning, even yeah. though it was like super fast. It was stunning. But I was really, um, I loved um, Mostar. I, I remembered the war. And I remembered the video, I re actually that night we got on YouTube and went back and found the video of when that bridge had been destroyed. And um, being in, in Mostar was very meaningful because there is still evidence of that war. Mm -hmm. And yet it is just a, um, a beautiful and, and interesting, very interesting um, town. And, and I just, for me, it was Dubrovnik. But, you know, and that's what I remembered from being there. And I, I'll admit I was a teenager, um, <laughs> um, was Dubrovnik and and uh, it, you know, it just didn't disappoint. And 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 in Dubrovnik, we had a group of us that we just had a great time. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that played into it as well with the five of us and how much fun we had. Mm -hmm. Now, did you guys did you walk the wall? We did. We did. We you did. were part of the part of the group that that did that, and it was hot when we were there. But you yeah, it was hot. Hot. <laughs> well, and it was pretty funny because you know it's one way, and we lost Carla, <laughs> and we laughed that this is the only group that could lose Carla on a one way street, uh, street <laughs> on one way wall. So that that was pretty funny, but it was it was great. Yeah, that, that was that was great, and and I didn't go up on the wall, but but Dubrovnik is always a highlight. Uh, the architecture is just 
beautiful. It's, it's stunning. stunning. It's yeah. just stunning. And, and, you know, I tell people when, you know, a lot of times you, you go to, to Greece, to Athens, and, and you go to Rome and you see ruins. But when, when you go to Croatia, you're looking at, at buildings that date back to the same medieval days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they're still, st- I mean, their people have their shops in them and people are they're living in them. <laughs> they're, they're still there. It, it, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and I will say that's, that's one thing that really, um, really interested me. And I just didn't understand. I didn't have much experience or knowledge, even though I'd been there about the ancient history, about how those buildings, you, you know, took them years, hundreds of years to build. And that um, they had all the different influences of, of, of Greece and Roman and Venetian and, and Turks, because it was whoever was in control, <laughs> in control at that time. That, that was fascinating. It's really interesting. It, it was fascinating. And, and driving through the countryside on the, the pre-tour where you could see mm-hmm. in the country, you could see the evidence of the war with, with places yes. that had, you know, shrapnel scars on buildings and, mm-hmm. uh, so forth and, and buildings with no roofs and things that still have not been uh, restored. So uh, they, the country has been through some very difficult times, but my goodness, are they thriving now? Oh yeah. It was, it, everybody should go. Yeah. That's what I have to say. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of think because it really does. I, I really find that if you're into the history aspect or you're just into beautiful scenery, if you're an active adventurer and you like the hiking and the water and all of that sort of thing, uh, if you're a foodie, if you're into to fabulous regional wines, if you're into to wine, it, it just it checks off all of, of the boxes and mm-hmm. has something for everyone. Uh, Five star hotels. And of course, I really love what we did with the cruise, uh, the seven nights just cruising through the the coastline. I think that's such a great way to to cover a lot of territory and and in the intimacy and convenience of kind of your own floating boutique hotel. (laughs) Yeah. And with a a group of people who who soon become like family. So it's really an interesting, uh, such a convenient and, uh, what about safety gals? What did you feel? Did you, did you have any concerns about safety? Not, at, Not all. at all. Not once. Not walking through the towns. Nothing. Yeah. I just had no concerns at all. Yeah. And yeah. and I frequently in my last trip there last year and this trip as well, I would I would take off from, from the boat for an hour or so in the evening by myself. I traveled solo mm-hmm. both times and never gave a thought to, mm-hmm. to any concerns that, that there might be any kind of safety issue. It's it was just feels uh you know, just, just uh, totally not a a Mm non-issue. And, and, you know, that's what, that's what captured me all those years ago was the feeling there, the feeling of how wonderful the people are and open and, and, and giving. And it was, you know, it's like, yeah, the countryside is great and, and it was beautiful, but it's, it's the feeling of Croatia that, that really captured me. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and people are very warm and welcoming. Most speak English. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so you, you can easily interact with, with people. It, it's just it, it's just such a special destination. But uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, looking at the, at, at the aspect of traveling as part of a group event, I know some people, uh, some of our clients tend to be hesitant about publishing it you know, plugging into a group of any kind, an escorted tour, small group, whatever it may be. Uh, had, had had you traveled at all with, with a group event prior to this? We have traveled with friends a little bit, but never with an organized group. Yeah, never. Yeah. And, and how did you, I think we pretty much covered that, but but this kind this kind of was was something new for you, and you plugged into it. And uh, did you have any hesitation about joining a group initially? Yeah, I was a little nervous. I didn't know anybody on yeah. the group, and the only person I knew I hadn't seen in over twenty years. <laughs> so, wow. Uh, 
And, and, and that, that would be our, our own agent, uh, Natalie McCaskill out of Houston, who, who knew you when you were a small child and in fact <laughs> had babysat for you. So, so that, that, and, and she says, Oh, you're going to love them. They're great. And, and boy, was she right. It's just like, <laughs> oh, you know, uh, just everybody. It was just so, so cool. And, uh, what about the ship itself? What did what did you think about the ship? You know, the the ship was wonderful. The the, mm. the crew, they they took such good care of us, and mm -hmm. I just, you know, I don't think I could say enough good things about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and it was it was comfortable because you had several places that you could you could go if you wanted to kind of get away and read a book. You could sneak to the top and you know be in a lounge chair, and if if you wanted to hang out and talk to people, you could sit in that kind of what became the living room right off the dining space. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. uh, it was it was really nice because you could you could get away or you could be right in the middle of it. Right. The the, the rooms were, of course, it's a small vessel. This uh, mm -hmm. the vessel accommodates 30 people max. And so, so uh, rooms are, are, you know, they're, they're cozy, but, but, but they, you know, they have everything you need. Bathrooms are very nicely appointed with lovely finishes and everybody had their own private bathroom, no sharing down the hall or anything like that. Uh, what about the food? What do you think about the food? <laughs> well, you know, I, I'll speak to that one because I, I have celiac. So I can't eat any, any gluten at all. Like I can't, if it's cooked in the same pot, I can't, I can't eat it, you know, or the same water, any of that. Um, and they took great care of me. And that food was spectacular. Was really good and beautiful, uh, beautifully presented. Yeah, it was, it was great. It was, um, it far exceeded my expectations. In fact, it's a little hard to come home. <laughs> that you have to cook and it's not going to be you know the freshness the fresh vegetables yeah. and a tomato that actually tastes like a tomato Those tomatoes were amazing <laughs> it was so much there is really truly you, mm -hmm. you know their their vegetables are farm to table you would you would see the the chef and, and sometimes somebody ran into the captain getting fresh fish uh -huh. uh, for, for our our meal that day and and so uh it really is very different because, uh, you know, even things, as you said, tomatoes and cucumbers and, and the fresh fruits of the melons and, and uh, fresh apricots and the tray of breakfast that, uh, that they would have out for us. And, and I mean, they just absolutely burst with flavor and, and the tomatoes are grown for flavor and not for right. um, Ability, <laughs> yeah, the withstanding shipping, you know, the exactly. kind of you know the plasticized things that we get in the supermarket sometimes. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, very, yeah. very yeah. different. Uh, what, what about motion issues? Are either of you motion sensitive at all? Uh, you know, I had motion sickness on one tiny ship, or it was I don't even know what kind of boat it was when we went whale watching mm -hmm. years ago, but it was rough seas. But this ship. We got on early enough before we started sailing that it's almost like you had time to acclimate. Mm -hmm. But what we noticed, though, was that the rocking relaxed us to the point that we were ready to nap all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it was you, very you could, yeah, kind of that cradle-like effect. Yeah, just, exactly. it was just enough motion to just kind of calm well, you. And, and, you know, I'm very motion sensitive. Uh, well, and uh, I, I have... Uh, the, it's a prescription, the scopolamine oh. patch that you put behind your ear that I always have. I know my tolerances on the big ships now, and I only, you know, I don't put it on when I board like I once did because I know now when I start feeling, I say, ah, better go down and, and put it on. But I did not have that on. You know, here we are on a small vessel, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I didn't have to use it at all. So that's been one thing that I've had several people raises an issue that who actually uh, were were afraid to book this because they were afraid that the, that they would be seasick the entire time, mm -hmm. but uh, not an issue. And, and I, I'm prone to have that and not at all. And I don't think I was aware of anyone around us having it either. I, I don't think we had anybody. The only person I heard talking about a motion issue 
was uh, during, uh, I think, on our post-cruise, the the windy roads to, to most oh, of yes. us. Yes. Yeah. yes. I, I think we had one person who was toward the back of our, our shuttle bus yes. who, who was experiencing a little motion sickness from, from the windy roads yes. because she, she had put her packed her stuff away, not thinking about any issues right. once That's she got off of the boat, didn't right. need it on the boat, but uh so uh it was it was just kind of interesting mm -hmm. that when the only issue I heard about was, was uh in a vehicle rather than yeah. on the boat, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Uh, anything that surprised you? Uh, any un kind of unexpected delights along the way on this journey? You know, for me, it was, well, there was a couple of things. The first was just how much I enjoyed every single person on that, on that boat, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, we ranged from, I think it was like maybe 52 to 88 that I, the age range, the age range. Mm -hmm. I think that's, a, I think that's about right. We had a pretty broad spectrum of ages. Yeah. And I just enjoyed every single one of them. And so that was, that was really fun. The, the other thing that was, that really kind of surprised me is that it, it sparked an interest in some, some of the ancient, um, ancient history of, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the Ottoman empire and, uh, and you know the Venetians and all of that. So that that was uh, that was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. It gave me something else to look up. And I kind of set set you on maybe some research and mm -hmm. and uh, just just some new discoveries. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Anything for you, Mary? You no, know, I think the the um, the crew on the ship was definitely an unexpected delight. Though they you know they they were so genuine. And so nice. And, you know, and they threw that dance party for us after the captain's dinner. And, um, you know, I, I think it seemed like they really liked us. Well, I, I think they really did. They did a great. Yeah, they just were wonderful, wonderful people. Yeah, they don't do the dance party. You know, they, they just kind of watch their group, you know, and they uh -huh. and so with the captain's dinner. They kind of know the people a little bit by the time that comes around and uh, they just decide which groups are that, that would be mm -hmm. uh, ha have fun with that. And just it, that was a, just kind of a nice surprise <laughs> afterward. Everybody was just having a great time. We won't say anything about Kevin and pole dancing. Right. <laughs> we, we, we agreed that would stay on the ship. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell me just. If you were to rank uh, on a scale of one to 10, if you were going to rank Croatia as, as a travel destination, mm -hmm. uh, w you know, one being not worth the cost of the, of the airfare to get there and 10 belongs at the very top of, of every bucket list, what would you say? Oh, I'd give it a solid 11. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. Oh, it was so, it was just, I've just, I've told so many people about our trip and, um, and they, and they've told me, well, I can tell that you really loved it because, you know, we just sort of have gone on and on about it. <laughs> well, I, well, would agree. I would agree, Pat. You know, I like I said, it's been 42 years. And when I walked away, I was like, yep, now I remember it's I, I'd go back again. Yeah. And, and, you know, it had the same effect on me when I went the first time last year. <laughs> Nowhere on my radar to go to Croatia. I mean, it just was an opportunity that came and I was like, OK, uh, sure. Well, yeah, of course I'll go. You know, yes. T sign me up. And, and then when I got there, I have I literally have not shut up about it. So <laughs> yeah, we've had a number of people say Croatia, really? And, and, <laughs> and, and, yeah, you've, got go. you've got to go. And that's the other thing that's interesting is describing to them where it is. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. once you once you describe it in terms of Italy and the boot, they can, you know, they, it, and then they start start to kind of get it. Yeah. Yes. And, and it, but yeah, it, it's just uh, and folks, you know, if you're listening to this and Croatia, you know, this, this kind of has has piqued your interest. Uh, we would certainly be open to exploring, to doing this again for 2023 if we have uh, sufficient interest. So if you're listening tonight and you would like to uh, 
uh, know more about uh, how you could get to Croatia, just reach out. It's it's very easy to uh, uh, to get hold of us. You can give me a call at the number there on the screen, uh, or you can uh, get me at pat at dancingmoontravel.com, whatever works for you. Just reach out and, and would love to know about your interest. And we can explore doing this again for next year. Uh, charter our own. Pro or if you have a group of friends and family who might want to put together a trip, uh, let's talk about that because it only takes about 20 people to, mm -hmm. to charter a vessel like this. So, you know, that's not very, very many people at all. <laughs> Easy to do. So thank you so much. All right. Uh, appreciate you guys so much, Mary and Tamara. Uh, thank you for taking time out this evening to chat with us about your experience on the Adriatic Queen. Uh, and I so appreciate your insights and I appreciate getting to know you. And I know that we're going to stay in touch over the course of the next however many years it is. I'm so thankful that Natalie reached out and brought you on board because it really yes, would it not, <laughs> it would not have been the same without you. Thank so you. folks, uh, as you know, we always have a giveaway uh, so each week on Let's Talk Travel. I have something to give away. And for those of you who are listening live, this is for live listeners only. Tonight, I have a bottle of high quality Croatian olive oil. And ladies, I think you'll agree that it's not like what you buy in the stores over here. It, it is, it's rather addictive, actually. But I have a very special high quality olive oil. I have a bottle right here that I will send out to the first person for, or to anybody. We're going to put a drawing in effect. Uh, just enter in the comments section uh, the word Croatia. And I will uh, hold a drawing this evening and uh, whoever's names comes out, I will send you that bottle of special olive oil. Thanks again, Tamara and Mary. We appreciate you gals. And uh, to our listeners, thanks for being here. And we'll see you again next week for another episode of Let's Talk Travel. Okay. Bye.